Hey, Steve here, and this video is my ultimate guide to the Autumn Effect in Photoshop. And it's going to teach you not only the standard way to apply this popular Photoshop editing technique to your photos, but I'm also giving you five modifications that you can use to fine tune it and create the perfect glow and atmosphere for your landscape images. So if you like this video, then give it a thumbs up to let me know so I can keep making more just like it. And remember to subscribe to my channel so that you can be notified by YouTube every time I publish a new tutorial. Now, if you like the soft glow in your landscapes, then this is the ultimate Photoshop technique for you. But it's also a great contrast and color boosting technique that you can use to add subtle enhancements to most of your images when you actually apply this effect in a more subtle way than the standard application. So with that said, what I'll do is just run through, first of all, the steps for actually creating this effect to begin with, and then I'll show you my five tips for how you can get more out of this effect and that are gonna help you to use it in a more subtle and refined way. So the pretty much standard way of creating this effect, it all starts off with creating a merge copied layer. So assuming that you've got your background layer and then some adjustments um, on top of that, you can use the keyboard shortcut command option shift E on a Mac or control alt shift E on a PC. And that will create a merged copied layer on top of all of your other layers. Now, if you don't have any other layers, then, you know, if you've just got the background layer that you're working on, you can just click and drag the background down onto the uh, new layer icon and do it from there. But yeah, in this example, we'll just run through using the uh, command option shift or control alt shift E to create that new layer. And once you've got that new layer, uh, maybe we can just rename it Orton. We need to add some blur. So we can do that by going to the filter menu, blur and Gaussian blur. And you probably want to pick quite a low radius value, maybe around about 10. Uh, depending on the size and the resolution of your image. So the higher the resolution of your image, the more radius you have to give it to achieve the same amount of blur. But basically, you're just looking for something similar to what it looks like on the screen at the moment. So, you know, you can still see everything in the photo. It just looks as if you're sort of squinting your eyes a bit. Um, so for me, a radius of about seven to eight on this image will do just fine. So I'll click OK. And now we have that blurred layer on top of all our other layers. Now, the next thing that we need to do, and pretty much the only thing we need to do to uh, turn this into our standard Orton effect layer, would be to change the blend mode of this layer to soft light. And there we go. Now you see that has, uh, you know, this is before and this is after, and it's added a lot of contrast. It's made a really strong, kind of glowing effect. And um, yeah, the only downside of this effect as it's been applied in this standard way is that it is a bit too contrasty. So really the final step is just to take this opacity slider for the autumn layer and just reduce it until we get to a point where that effect is sort of nicely blended in and doesn't look uh, too heavy handed. So that covers the basics of how to actually create the kind of standard application of the Orton effect. Uh, and that leads us nicely on to tip number one that I want to share with you on how you can actually get more out of it. So tip number one, let me just delete this Orton layer and start over so I can uh, go back to the start and show you tip number one. And that is that once we create our merged copied layer, so again, command option shift or control alt shift E, Let's just rename it again to Orton. Before we add the blur, we want to convert the layer to a smart object by choosing filter convert for smart filters in the menu, or you can just right click on the layer and choose uh, convert to smart object. And now once you see that little icon in the bottom corner of the layer itself there, what that allows us to do is use the Gaussian blur, click OK. And once now I've added that filter, uh, that blur filter to the layer, because it's now a smart object, it allows me to actually go in and if I want to adjust the amount of blur after I've applied it that first time, 
then I can just double click where it says Gaussian blur here and we get this uh, box pop up again and we can adjust, adjust how much blur we want to, uh, to use. So what that means is you can create your effect and once it's been applied you can just reopen the Gaussian blur box and either increase or decrease the radius to just see and test the effect that using those different amounts of blur will have on your image. So just a quick tip, that first one, uh, which is to convert your layer to a smart object. It's not bad practice uh, in general for anything that you want to do in Photoshop. If you've got a pixel based layer, just convert it to a smart object just to help with that non-destructive workflow. Um, but yeah, that is something that works really well and is quite helpful here specifically for creating the auto effect. Now with that covered, let's move on to tip number two. So I'll just close this um, little drop down here that's got all this smart filter information just to tidy the layers panel up a bit. Now tip number two is quite a simple one and that is to experiment with different blend modes for your auto effect layer. So most of the tutorials that you might have seen online will suggest using either soft light or overlay. Now both of those are uh, blend modes that are going to add a lot of contrast to the effect and to your image. Overlay is like a really strong version of uh, soft light. Um, well, technically it's <laughs> there are differences, but it's a good way to think of it when you're using it for this effect. Um, so, you know, soft light, if you really, really want it to be applied more strongly than in soft light, then you can change to overlay blend mode. But there are some others uh, that you can experiment with. And what I like about the latest versions of Photoshop is the fact that when you hover over each one of these blend modes, it gives you a preview of what that looks like in the main image window. So some of these are going to look horrible, but others can actually be, uh, you know, can actually work quite well. So for example, screen and lighten are some that you might want to try. We'll try screen, obviously from the looks of it here at the moment, uh, we're going to want to reduce the opacity quite a lot. So again, probably down in the 10 to 30% kind of region. And um, yeah, essentially the difference between screen and lighten and overlay and soft light is that screen and lighten are gonna give you a much softer effect in the shadows. So whereas overlay and soft light are heavily increasing the contrast, which makes the shadows go quite dark a lot of the time, you won't get that so much with screen or lighten. So this tip really, however, is just to, uh, to tell you or to suggest to experiment with different blend modes to see which one might work better for your particular image. I think for this one, for me, soft light works quite well. So I'll just revert back to that and probably increase back up to 100% to get ready for the next tip. Now, as we've established already, one of the side effects of the autumn effect is that the shadows are uh, they are prone to going a bit dark so another way that you can um, you can stop that from happening or recover it when it does happen is to simply mask the effect out of those areas so you can do that if you're familiar with layers and masking this won't be news to you but um, you know if you're not then you know here's just a quick run through so we'll add a layer mask to the autumn effect layer just by hitting that icon down there and now we can take a black brush and in this example, the clouds up here in the top right and in the top left are really too dark. So we can just literally brush this effect out of those areas to, uh, to lessen its impact and remove that extra contrast. So here you can see I've just kind of brushed in the layer mask with the black brush and I've got a, a brush opacity of about 30% which allows me to do it kind of gradually rather than just, uh, you know, wiping the whole effect out in one big stroke of the brush. Now, if I just disable this mask by holding shift on the keyboard and clicking on the mask, I'll toggle that off and on a couple of times so we can see this is without the layer mask applied and this is with the mask applied. So, you know, the effect is still throughout the whole image except for those areas that I've brushed with a black brush into the layer mask. 
Now you can do it the other way around. If I just uh, reset that layer mask by pressing Command or Control and Delete, then we can start off with an inverted layer mask. So Command or Control I to turn the layer mask black and that hides the effect entirely, which now allows us to take a white brush and just brush the effect into where we want it. So depending on, you know, there's no real right or wrong way around to do that. You can either start with a black or a white brush and just brush it in or brush it out as you see fit. But essentially what we're doing here is just brushing to, to kind of manually paint this effect into the image. So that was tip three, just like a real simple application of using a layer mask. Now, moving on to tip four, we're actually going to go a step beyond that to uh, get a little bit more advanced and to do something a bit more subtle. Um, so yeah, essentially the same idea. We're going to be creating a layer mask that masks this effect out of the shadows, but we're not going to be doing it like willy nilly just with a big brush into the image. I'm actually going to create a luminosity mask so we can do that. I'll just run through the steps here. If you're not familiar with luminosity masking at all, then I'll put a link in the description to my free uh, intro to luminosity masking PDF, which you can download. Um, but yeah, essentially the steps to perform this are we'll click on the channels panel and then on the keyboard, we'll hold command or control and then we'll click once with the mouse on the RGB channel and that's going to load a selection based on the brightness of the image. And we can see that it's kind of roughly represented with the marching ants in the screen, you know, in the main image window. So with that selection active, come back over into the layers panel, click on the autumn layer. And when I click now to add a layer mask to the autumn layer, it's going to load this selection directly into the layer mask like so. And so what that gives us, if we look at the layer mask, uh, option click on the layer mask or, or uh, alt click just so that we can see the, the mask itself. Now, essentially this is um, showing us exactly what I would have wanted to do just with the, uh, the big brush and brushing the layer out of the shadows, uh, but it's done it kind of automatically and a lot, lot more accurately. So, you know, anywhere that is dark in the image, is dark in the layer mask and therefore knowing that layer masks hide or mask a layer out where the mask is black or gray or darker gray what this gives us is an effect that has uh, been masked out of those shadows so let me just toggle this effect off and on now so now we have that beautiful glow but it hasn't um, overly darkened those shadows in fact the darker the shadows, the less it's going to darken them. So, uh, you know, it's really protecting those dark shadows. And, you know, with uh, the opacity of this layer on 100%, this is actually the way that I most commonly use this effect, which is to create that luminosity mask that essentially just masks the effect out of the shadows. So here we go again, before and after, if I disable the layer mask, here we can see without the layer mask applied, really strong, uh, really dark shadows. With the layer mask applied, it's a lot more of a subtle effect. We still get that beautiful, nice glow to the image, but the shadows have not been underexposed um, due to the extra contrast. Now, what you can also do, just as an extra little bonus tip, is uh, you know if you want to do the same thing but the other way around, i.e., mask this out of the highlights and only have the alt and effect applied to the shadows, you can just invert the layer mask. So Command or Control I is going to invert the layer mask. And now we can see everything that was dark is now white in the mask. And everything that was light in the image is now dark in the layer mask. And so we can see here now this effect is only being applied in those dark areas. So, you know, different images are going to respond to this uh, differently. So, you know, if, if you know that you want to apply this effect to the shadows only, then this is what you can do. Otherwise, what's more common is that you'll want to do it the original way around what I showed you here and have it applied only in the highlights. Okay, so coming on to the fifth and final tip that I wanted to give you today in this video. And uh, before I do that, I'll just delete my layer mask there just so that we can start from this fresh 
uh, freshly applied auto and effect layer. Uh, so tip number five is that you can attach adjustment layers such as curves, levels, brightness and contrast to your auto and effect layer. And the way that you do that is once you've added your adjustment layer, you can either click this little icon here in the properties panel, or you can hold on the keyboard Alt or Option. And then when you move the mouse between those two layers and the icon on the mouse changes to this square with the little arrow on it, you can click there to essentially, well, attach, I say attach, it's just the, for some reason that's how I think about it, but essentially uh, you know, the proper terminology is that it's clipping the adjustment to that layer. So what that's gonna do, if I were to now increase the curve uh, just to brighten, then this is actually brightening the Orton layer and not the entire image. So normally, if you've not clipped your adjustment layer to any other layer, then the curve would affect the entire image. But when we clip it, it's only affecting the layer directly beneath it. So here we can, you know, in this example, I've, I've brightened that layer, uh, the Orton layer, and that's given us a different effect. You can also add in uh, a second point here into the curve to basically just add like an S curve and really enhance that contrast that the original um, Orton layer gave you. Or you can kind of negate some of the extra contrast in the shadows. So similar to what I showed you uh, with the luminosity mask, if you draw a curve like this where you know, you kind of try and keep the top half of the curve on that straight line, but then you increase or push the curve in the shadows up a bit. And as I do that, you can see that the shadows are actually lifting in the image because they haven't been so overly, um, they haven't had that contrast applied so heavily. So, you know, there's a lot, lot more you can do with these adjustment layers and it's you know too much really to kind of show you each and every variation on this. But yeah, my recommendation, my tip would be to experiment with, especially the brightness contrast curves, maybe even hue saturation as well, and experiment with clipping those adjustment layers to the auto and effect layer and then adjusting them to, uh, you know, to see what kind of effect it gives you. Um, actually, before we finish this up, uh, I just remembered one other thing I did want to show you. Um, again, still in the curves adjustment, and that is that another really nice thing to do is actually uh, select one of the color channels in the curves adjustment, say for example, red, and increase, uh, you know, if we push this red curve up, then what we're actually doing is warming up the Orton effect layer to um, you know, to really increase that warm effect and uh, you know give really sort of I mean it's quite a strong effect at the moment I'm not sure quite how it's coming across in the video but um, you know again this is something that you can experiment with with the different color channels to um, you know to essentially see how they uh, you know how they affect the overall image so you know doing this and applying it to the Orton layer is actually going to give a slightly sort of more subtle, a different result to uh, just changing the color balance of the entire image. So, you know, this is changing the color of the uh, the glow of the image, if 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 that makes any sense whatsoever. Um, so again, really just another thing to experiment with. I'll just reset that. Um, but yeah, the the overall lesson for tip number five is to remember that you can clip these adjustment layers to your Orton effect layer to uh, to kind of change the nature of the Orton effect itself and by doing that that can you know often yield much uh, different and much more subtle and refined um, applications of the Orton effect so if you like this video and you want more i'll just pop a link on the screen right now to some more videos of mine on youtube thanks for watching